Let's talk about what's changed. Instead of the two 330 ohm resistors that were over the inverters before, there's now a 1 mega ohm resistor and a 1200 ohm resistor. The actual layout of the inverters has also changed, so now there's one inverter over the crystal and then another inverter just on the output basically to re clean up the signal some more, instead of the slightly strange two inverter system that uh, was running before. I've also now added load capacitors, each at a value of 10 picofarads. I used the equation linked to me in an article from someone who commented on the previous video to calculate the values for these capacitors. The equation is capacitor value 1 times capacitor value 2 divided by the sum of the capacitor values then plus the stray capacitance in the actual circuitry. So I went for 10 picofarads because that roughly adds up to the 10 picofarads required as low capacitance by this crystal. This signal is then connected over to the clock pin of the Z80 as well as to the clock pin of the ACI which is currently unplugged uh, and sitting on this little board here. So, as you can see, I've now got the oscilloscope software open, um, and I'm going to attach the oscilloscope probe to the direct output of the clock circuitry. As you can see, we're now getting a really nice square wave, and it's 5 volts peak to peak. So, this is now actually clocking the processor and we're getting a nice square clean signal out of it it's ringing slightly at the bottom but the actual edges are nice and sharp uh, much sharper and it's actually 5 volts peak to peak now so that's really great um, thanks for all the people who helped me in the comments with that uh, that's one problem solved uh, now we need to move on to the next one this is the output of address pin 0 as you can see the processor seems to actually be clocking through each of the addresses and counting up and actually trying to interface with memory. Now whether or not it's actually getting a response I can't really tell at the moment. Um, we shall see exactly whether or not the system is actually booting into the basic interpreter that Grant uh, has put on this ROM. If I probe pin A7 on the processor then you can actually see the change in signal and how this pin is mostly high but is taken low at certain points when it's no longer needed in the current address. So the actual output of the processor is looking good so far on this new clock circuitry and I think mostly uh, the actual processor is wired up correctly. If I now probe data pin 0 you can see that again data is being clocked on the data bus so I believe the system is reading from memory um, and that's, of course this is just garbled data but it seems unlikely because I'm not exactly sure where this data would be coming from if it wasn't uh, because of the cleanness of these edges so I think data is actually being clocked from the memory into RAM. So where do we go from here? Well I'm still not getting any data on the terminal on the PC so there's still something wrong with the system. I think I may have found an issue with the ACIA already. As you can see, if I probe the TX and RX clocks of the system, then we're still getting that nice clock signal through. However, if I also probe RX data, then we can see the same clock signal. So there's an electrical short between RX data and TX and RX clock, which needs solving. This electrical short is actually on the board, so um, I'm going to go and change that quickly and we'll see uh, how the system fares after that. Okay guys, so I've changed the 
Um, I've removed the short between the TX and RX clock and RX data on the ACIA here. I also found that there was a short between um, the interrupt pin and the NMI pin on the processor, so I've removed that. Um, and that means that the interrupt output of the ACIA should now be functioning correctly. It occurs to me that there are still a lot of, um, or a few issues that I think need to be resolved in terms of uh, making this uh, comply and be like grants system. Um, the actual um, memory control is still wrong. Um, at the moment I've got A12 connected up to the I.O. decoder, but it occurs to me that obviously as soon as you get above 8,000 bytes, then you're going to go all over the place in terms of which address you're actually, which uh, chip you're actually going to be accessing. So that needs solving, and I think what I might try and do is replace this chip with um, an OR gate chip instead, and wire it up exactly how Grant has it. So uh, we shall see with that. Unfortunately that's all I've got time for this weekend, so in next weekend video I'll be dealing with those issues and changing the system a bit more, but I'm really happy because we're making significant progress and the system's looking better and better each weekend and each time anything's changed. The oscilloscope's really helped out, so I'm really pleased with that. Thanks for watching guys, if you've got any suggestions please do leave them in the comments, um, I really appreciate any advice you can give me. Thanks very much, see you in the next one.